Hi, all my friends. Welcome. I'm Suki, the Brown Eyed Stitcher, and today is an extra special video. So I dressed accordingly. I put on a necklace I like never wear that's really big and blingy for me, and um, th these match sort of, kind of, but like it feels weird to kind of match those and. You probably can't tell, but these, there's, there's, like, glitter on my lips. Okay. Uh, you didn't need to know all of that. <laughs> or maybe you did. <laughs> maybe you did need to know all of that. Today, you are joining me here for my 22nd floss tube video, which is celebrating one year on floss tube. I cannot believe it's been a year and how many people I have connected with because I started making these videos. I've had a presence on Instagram for longer than that, but I think it's, I think the video aspect has really, really built those connections. Um, Probably because once I turn on the camera, I just, like, talk. And, like, you get to know who I am <laughs> more than that overthinking caption in Instagram. I try not to overthink them. It's, but, you know... Here I'm just spewing things on Instagram. I can think a little bit more. <laughs> it is what it is. Anyway, hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining me. For my one year anniversary, I'm going to be showing all of my projects. I did this six months ago at my um, like six month floss anniversary, And now we're here again at one year. And I really like doing this every six months. It helps kind of give me this picture of what I've been doing in these larger chunks of time. So I spent a lot of time gathering all my projects, um, gathering the information from six months ago, where I was then, where I am now. And I get to show it to you all today. I'm so excited. The other thing I'm excited to talk about is retreat. I just went on retreat. Last weekend, it was my very first one, and I'll try not to, like, I'll try to have some semblance of order when I talk about it, but who knows. I, I will tell you up front that I am a little scattered today. I have an appointment in about 45 minutes from now, so I know that I have to film in chunks and and I don't I don't like doing that because it scatters my brain more than my brain already scatters and I just got home yesterday after driving what felt like a million miles all over the place I was happy to do it but it was just very draining by the end of it so retreat I knew a handful of people who were going to be there. Um, well, it was going to be my first time meeting them, but I at least had, like, conversations with them beforehand. <laughs> so, I to me, that's meeting. Um, I don't know why we feel like there has to be this distinction between in-person meeting and online meeting. Except that I feel like maybe it's still really new to have online friends. Because, you know, when I was born, that was not a thing. You did not have online friends because there wasn't exactly an online to, like, develop friendships. But that is what social media is. It's, it's all about making connections and, and, and building those relationships. And anyway, so... There was a handful of people I knew who were going to be there that I'd had previous interactions with. 
and I connected with so many more people, um, some who knew who I was and, and many who, who didn't. So that was fun. I really liked that my first retreat was small. I think there was maybe about 50 people there. This was just the second year for this retreat. It's a small venue and and so that kind of keeps your attendance like I guess kind of close knit and intimate. And it was a really good first retreat for me. Now I feel like I could go out to a larger retreat and feel less overwhelmed by the sheer number of, of people that are there. I feel like I could do that at this point. Um, I guess it's more choosing a retreat at this point. Uh, th that would be good for a bigger one, but We'll see. If you have any suggestions, um, if you're going to one, let me know and I'll see how it works with my schedule um, and if it's possible. <sighs> so I met Alara. If you don't know her yet, then you are new to my channel because I'm pretty sure I talk about her every single video. It's really weird. She and I are like, I, I don't know, we're, we're like, we're not the same person, but there are so many similarities between the two of us. And every time we find something new, we just, it makes us laugh at this point. <laughs> For a long time, it just kind of blew our minds. Like, oh, that's the same. Oh, I'm like that too. And now, and now we just kind of expect it, that there's going to be, there's going to be similarities. Um, so I met Alara. I met Kristen, who um, has been told that she needs to post more on Instagram. Um, Kristen, Kristen the Canadian. Um, <laughs> and Jen backcountry stitcher from Utah and I feel like the three of us well Alara is local but between Jen and Kristen and I we represented the furthest traveling into Ohio most everybody else was from Ohio or like Indiana there was one person but the majority of us of us the majority of attendees were were local and so it was kind of funny that three out of the four of us were out of staters. <laughs> I did grow up in Ohio, but I don't currently, so live there. <sighs> Let's see. So other people at my table, I met Paula and Alice and Karen and Sarah. And there were like four, five other tables, because there were six tables. There's five other tables, and so I met several of the ladies from all the other places. Um, all the ladies and Sebastian. So. Um... What's a lot of fun is going around to all the tables and just kind of like chatting with people, seeing what they're stitching on, um, like finding something in common with them. I met Tina, who has a very similarly colored purple hair. Tina took a picture. I had not seen it yet, but she took a picture of us together with our purple hair. And just there's just like too many people for me to just say um I will shout out to Shauna <laughs> I'm so glad you came up Shauna and like were you were willing to work with me <laughs> uh 
you were just, that was just, it was awesome to meet you. Uh, here's the thing. I am just like this regular person. And so to have people come up to me and like know who I am from making these videos it's unreal it feels crazy to me why why am I getting emotional <laughs> I have like tears starting to come to my eyes um it's it's such a weird experience and um <laughs> and I feel like I just was like oh please 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 <laughs> it's okay I'm just I'm just like this normal person who's willing to like put stuff out on the internet I don't know I don't know but um I loved making those additional connections. Um, there was Shauna, there was um, Debbie, Kim, like just so many people that, and by so many, I just mean like, even if there had just been one person who came up to me saying like, I, oh, I watch your videos. Even if just one person had done that, I would have been like, you do? Why? You, that's, <sighs> yeah, yeah. I sh I'm saying all of this, I think, just because <sighs> because for me, I love connecting with you guys. And I and I want to be able to like travel around and go to different retreats or just come visit you and just like deepen those connections with you. Like I want that. Um, but I'm very unused to people wanting that with me. <laughs> and I kind of, I'm still learning that, that that's a thing. That, um... <laughs> People like me. Um, like, this is obviously some like deep seated things. Wow, there's tears coming out, guys. And this is not the time that I was um, expecting that to happen. <laughs> I want to connect with people. But it's still hard for me to believe that people want to connect with me too. And that people do feel a connection with me and that, that because of that connection, they also want to meet me. And um, the only thing I can say to that is I love you all. And this community is the very best, the very best. And like, I'm honored to be just a little portion of that. I'm touched <laughs> very much. Um, so retreat. <laughs> I, let me, going into retreat, I knew two things. Um, people always say that you stitch less than you intend to and you spend more than, or you stitch less than you expect to and you spend more than you intend to. So I just went into that. Um, and we'll talk about what I stitched on as um, when I get to like the whip parade which I'm super excited about. Um, uh, 
I lost my train of thought 100%. Retreat. We'll talk about what I stitched on. I, I actually got a lot done. Uh, and I'm very happy about that, especially because the second day I had a headache that would not go away. We, I even took like two kinds of medication and it didn't, it didn't help. But we think that it was because there was like a storm front moving through the area and that was a, probably a factor. So, let me show you what I got at retreat and we'll just start there. Okay, so every retreat has like a freebie table. You can bring things that you're ready to pass on and, and then you can go up and it's, it's free. You can see if any of it is something that you like and yeah, I, it was piled. I wish I had taken a picture of it, but it was piled. It was a table. It had like just so many things. Okay. I found two things that to bring home with me. One is, okay. It's called Marty Bell's Tuck Box Tea Room. It looks like this. Okay. Marty Bell's. I've seen other people, um, show patterns of Marty Bell, and every time I see them, I, I, I fall in love just a little bit more. So when I saw this one, I, I pretty much grabbed it right away. <sighs> because, because every time I see somebody show a Marty Bell, I'm like, oh, I think I need to try that. Um, inside it says, that it's an actual place in Carmel, California, or Carmel. It's part of Marty's Americana collection. So there's, um, anyway, I'm just gonna show you. I'm just gonna show you again, as close as I can. So I'm excited for that one. Uh, the other thing I picked up was Let's see, what is this called? Flower Fair. By Judy Dixon. And it looks like that. It's a flower sampler with specialty stitches. Uh, so to be seen designs is what it says down here. Okay, I'll get kind of mid. There we go. And this, um, has, well, I'll show you what's in it. Because I haven't even pulled this out. But it's kitted. I, mean, I think it's kitted all the way. But like I said, I haven't even looked up yet. It looks like this kit came from European Cross Stitch. It has fabric. The, it doesn't have a name, but I'm going to guess it is what is on... The instructions here, which is 28 count white jobelin. I've never had jobelin though, so I don't I don't really know, but it does look like 28 count. Um okay. Oops. I'm dropping stuff. Okay, we've got look at these cute little tags. I love it. Okay, so we've got this is DMC Pearl number 12. Um, I'm not doing a very good job of... There 
we go. Okay, so you have your DMC. Here's a DMC next to the pearl number 12. Here, in the middle is a pearl, number eight. So this one's 12, that's an eight, and that's um, regular DMC floss. It's got a couple of pearl number eights, like that's a B5200. Uh, lots of DMC. Here's a water lily. I love water lilies. Um, so this is a, a Karen Water Lilies called Dawn. Aren't those colors just beautiful? It's got pink and, like, a little bit of pink. Purple, green. Oh. More pearl. More DMC. Man, I hadn't even opened this up before. I didn't know that this had more than just DMC. Well, that's not true. I didn't know that there were other flosses besides DMC because I didn't even open it up. So the pearl and the water lily is, is new. Um, it also has... I don't know where it went. Well, it has some beads. And this one down here is like... You can't really see, but there's just like three of them in here and they're differently shaped. Where'd the Krennic go? There's Krennic. There it is. One oh two C is what it says. There we go. So I don't know if it's everything because it Yeah. Yeah, that looks like everything. Which is fun to have all of that. I'm excited. I had no idea. That some of that was in here. Okay, what else did I? That was all I got from the freebie table. Um, I I finished a project while I was there, so I bought two more patterns. Um, hold on, there's a sticker right. in front of this. All right. In my wish list video, which you may or may not have seen, but if you saw it, I I talked about a pattern that I had seen on somebody else's video. Um, Megan at Stitching Moon. She showed this pattern in one of her videos. And I went to 123 to stitch to find it and it wasn't there. And I have found another project to put on my wish list instead. But at the retreat, I saw the project that I wanted. And it's um, by Silver Creek Samplers. It's called A Perfect Match. The words say, my love for you will never cease. You are my missing puzzle piece. I'm huge into puzzles. And I really, really like So I saw it and immediately grabbed it. And then I saw this one, Madame Chantilly's Celebrate Summer. I want this whole seasonal series and they had summer so I grabbed it. It is so cute. I love the whale. Um, like there's a whale here. It's so cute. I love it. It says, hello, beach. So, 
I got that one. And then I picked up some hand dye fabrics because I don't know how you don't see fabrics in person and then not buy at least one. I bought two. This is called, oh, it's by Live and Die LA. This is called Chalkboard. It's a 28 count Lugana. Look at it. I have like zero plans for it, but it's beautiful. It's like this beautiful dark, well, chalkboard color. The other one I got was an opalescent because I love the sparkle. It's also a 28 count Lugan. It's called Aurora Borealis. Right there. Yeah, look at that. I love this so, so, so much. Again, I have zero idea what to do on it. Can you see that? Look at that opalescent shine. It's so pretty. The purple and the greens and the all the all the different purples. It's gorgeous. Blue. I really don't have like a stash, and so I feel like I have. I mean, I I guess I have a small amount. My stash is growing, guys. I don't ever want like a huge amount, but. There's a little bit of excitement that I have some. All right, and then Live and Die LA also had hand-dyed floss. This was funny. Alaire and I bought the same floss without knowing that we were buying the same floss. This is called Space Oddity. I got the 50-yard one because cause I did. Look at that. I feel like it goes with my outfit today, except the blue. I'm not wearing any blue. Um, yeah. Again, I have no plans, but it was gorgeous and I needed it. And then I bought two bags from Alara. Because she made bags and they were popular. I was very patient and I allowed people to kind of People who didn't yet have one of her bags to to get first choice, <laughs> I guess. And then I went, and some of my favorites were still there, so I was happy. So you know, I already have this one. This is like a large, I guess you would say. This one I already had of hers, and so I got a medium size. Look at that. Look at this. Bam. Isn't that gorgeous? It's so pretty. And I got a small. Look at the froggies. They're so, so cute. I love them. So in comparison, there's a size comparison for you. She does have an extra small, I think, too, something smaller than this. Um, this fits perfectly in my purse, so this is really good for calendar girls. Actually, I did have calendar girls in here. Um, I took it out for this video. But there's a, there's an even smaller one, but it would also be really good, like, if you were just to keep your accessory things. So maybe extra needles, your beeswax, um, something for your ending threads, like once you cut them off, your orts, your scissors. It, uh, having, having like an extra small would be really nice. And they still have your double vinyl pocket, which is awesome. These ones have one grommet, and then these have two. And of course that one has two. And this one has the snap for the 
double vinyl pocket. These ones don't have the snaps. They don't need them at all. I love it. I love, I love Alara's bag so much. So those are the things that I acquired. Oh, wait, wait, that's not all of it. Um, there was like a swag bag. Is that what we call them? Um, I can't show you everything that's in them, but we did get these two needle minders. This one is the hotel that we were in. And then this one is like the springs for yellow springs. Um, the yellow spring located inside Glen Helen Nature Preserve. That's what, that's what this one is. So this is the hotel, the Mill Park Hotel, and, and, the, and the Yellow Spring. And highlighter. We got some tea, and it was all kinds of different kinds of tea. I, have, I ended up with two people's, well, mine and somebody else's tea. I don't even know whose it is. Um... But there were all different kinds of teas, and so there was some, like, swapping around of teas. They came from Bees and Teas Stitching. There's this. Oh, oh, Janet gave it. I didn't even notice. I was, like, about to say I have no idea who handed this out. It's called Frog Be Gone. <laughs> and so when you frog, you can take this and, like, get the... Get those fibers that kind of cling to your fabric, just like that. So Janet Jabber, uh, I met her. I don't know if it's Janet Jabber. That's like super bad showing up. And then there's some patterns I can't, oh, maybe I can. Okay, this one is I stitch, therefore I am. I think the other ones don't have a mock-up. Oh, this one does. Uh, what is this called? Autumn Black Work Cat. It's fun because I just put out a, a backstitch video and then I got this Black Work Cat. I'm like, oh, I love Black Work. Actually, I've never done Black Work, but I do enjoy backstitching, so. I think that I will enjoy black work. And this one is autumn. It just says autumn cross stitch pattern. And look at those little squirrels. Very lovely, very seasonal. So that. Those are the things that I acquired while at retreat. If. You have not been to a retreat. I encourage you to find one. You don't need to go to a big one. Um, you can go to a little one and they are so lovely. You get to see people, um, like everybody pretty much. You can go around to all the tables. Uh, usually you wanna go around more than once because people change out projects all the time. <laughs> so if you wanna keep seeing it, it's fun. Um, when you finish something, everybody cheers for you and and you can cheer on other people when they finish. It's it's just, it's beautiful. Um, you get to see the stitching of everybody like in person. I feel like that is one of the biggest benefits of, of going to a retreat because videos and pictures are lovely, but it's nothing like seeing these in person. It's incredible to see it in person. So that and the and being immersed in the community of like-minded people who who love the same craft that you do is it's so worth it. 
Okay, I'm going to take this opportunity. I'm going to stop now. I have to go to my appointment. It's not even going to seem like anything happened, but I feel like I need to acknowledge that I'm going somewhere <laughs> and then I will be back. I'm going to the chiropractor. It is very needed after the drive. Like, so I live in Virginia. I drove up to Ohio. It was about eight hours. Um, I gave myself time. My sister lives up there, so I gave myself time in between driving and going to the retreat. But then following the retreat, I had to, I drove up to Chicago, which is another six hours further away from where I live. And my daughter and I, um, we did a thing. What did we do? We went to a place that had a lot of people and a concert. Um, we went to a concert. It was my daughter's first concert. Uh, we went to go see a K-pop group called ITZY. One of our favorite girl groups. I mean, one of my favorites. She has a lot of favorites. So I'm not sure that I can say it's one of her favorites. Um, but it's a group that we both really, really like. And with the timing of scheduling and locations and everything, this is what I, this is what we had to do. Let's go up to Chicago. So... The retreat ended midday on Sunday, and then I drove the six hours. Well, actually, I drove to get my daughter and then drove the six hours. Um, so I was like seven hours of driving right there to go up to Chicago. The concert was Monday night, so we could hang out and get outdoors and see some things, drink some boba. On Monday and then Tuesday we went back to Ohio because I wasn't going to drive the 13 hours back home in one shot so I went back to my sister's house stayed the night and then made the rest of the drive the next day anyway lots of driving and yeah it was a lot of fun though so in a few seconds for you but in like a little bit for me. We're going to dive into the whips and I can't wait. I'm all adjusted. It feels good. He found all the spots from all the driving that I did. The neck adjustments were, oh, they're always so good. They always give me a little bit of a, like, headache. To feel things release but it's always so much better afterwards so I'm feeling a little bit relaxed <laughs> oh man okay I know I talked about the retreat and that we're delving into whips I'm sure there will be more things that come about come up about the retreat okay I am way excited for this whip parade. Um, I've got some amazing things to show you. I'm so excited. So here's how we're doing this. We're going from my oldest to my most current whip. If I have finished it, it's going to be shown within there according to start date. So I'm not separating out finishes. I'm just gonna show them in order. <sighs> Which means kind of weird things because normally I show my treasure home bookshelf last and it's gonna be kind of like fourth <laughs> or fifth, I don't even know. It's near the beginning that I'm gonna show it but it's a major finish. It's not all the way finished. If you follow me on, on Instagram, then you will have seen that I have finished the second shelf. Um, if you were at the retreat, you saw it in person. Um, and today I'm gonna show it to you, like those first two shelves unrolled 
It's incredible. Just incredible. Okay. So I hope I just remembered to tell you all the things. The whips are right here. My like stat notes are on this side. You're here. I'm here. Let's, I don't know where my brain is. It's like, it's everywhere. But let's do this. We'll see where we are. This is, this is what we're doing. Okay, so the first project is actually my daughter's project that I'm about to take over from her. Okay, uh, she's not touched this in a very, very long time. I do get asked somewhat regularly about her progress. The reason you don't see it is because she's not working on it. Which is sad to me, but that's okay. She can make choices. This is No Smoking, artwork by Randall Spangler. It's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. It is so adorable. And it's little. It's not a mini, but it's like 85,000 stitches. Okay, so it's it's a little one. It's just not charted as a mini. It doesn't say anyway. I don't know that I need to say all those things. Okay, so this is stitched on 25 count easy count. Two over one tent stitch. She started it October 23rd, 2021, so it's now officially a year old. And she is 4.35% done. Let's see here. Let me tighten it up. There you go. That's where she's at. So, in my six-month video, this was kind of stalled because she had... She had a small error here and wasn't sure how to work around it. She had tried to, but it was messing with her brain a little bit. So I took a look at it and I, I figured it out and I got her to a place where she could go back and finish, like, keep stitching. I don't think that she has since then, though. I think I'm the last one who's touched this project. But she's done such an amazing job. And every time somebody asks me about it, I say, see, it's not just me who wants to see you work more on it. It's other people, too, who think that it's amazing that you can do this. So um, I'm hoping that I can get her back and do more of this. But in the last six months, 633 stitches have gone in, and it's gone up 0.74%. That's my daughter. She's currently 12. She turns 13 soon. You know, I put all of these things in the bin to start with, but I can't put them back in the bin. This is going to be messy. Like, I'm going to toss them all on the floor over here. All right, my oldest project. It's Frodo and Galadriel. Artwork by Matt Stewart. Charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is one of the pieces that is going to go on my Lord of the Rings wall. This is 25 count Lugana. 2 over 1, 10 stitch. Currently. And we are... We have a lot of parked threads. I kind of forgot that this was, it's been a while. I don't, I've stitched it last in July, I think. But here we are. Um, I know I have one page finished. And then I think this is another page and some more. I started doing a diagonal thing, and then I was like, I want to see the whole top of the project. I think that's the last time I was working on it. Who knows what it'll be next time I work on it. 
I put in about 10,000 stitches this year, but in the last six months, I've put in 4,769 stitches, which equals 1.56%. So it is now at 6.3% in total. Halfway is, I think, here-ish. I don't, I don't know. This piece, I started off two over one full cross in this section. Um, it was my first one. I, I did what the pattern said and I quickly learned that I didn't like it and that's why people stitch in different ways. Um, so then I, I think I tried some one over one full cross and decided I didn't like that very well. So I did two over one ten stitch. So in this section right here, you have all three of those methods going on. You have two over one ten or full cross, one over one. There's not very many one over one, but it does exist. And then it's the rest of that is is a ten stitch. And you can't really tell. You really can't. Especially when you're looking at it from back here. I love the colors. I love this project. I want my Lord of the Rings wall to see more love. It's going to take some time. It's going to take time. <laughs> This won't come out again until next year, I think. Because I met my goal for this year. I forgot to tell you, so this was this is the first out of 27 current projects I have going. Um, 27. I have finished eight projects in the last six months. Yeah, and I've only started one thing. Yeah. You'll see more than 27. It's 27 plus the eight. So 34 projects plus my daughter's, that's 35. But anyway, active projects for me right now. This one, this is a finish. I'm not even going to show you that picture. I don't need to. I only need to show you this. This is under the seat. If you watched my 24 hours of cross stitch, you know about this piece. This was a stitch along that Lakeside Needle Cross did. It's designed by During Jones. It was released in 2017. I started it in 2017. And then I did a tiny bit in 2018 and a tiny bit in 2019, but I mostly did it this year, 2022. This is an 18 count uh, printed fabric by Fabric Flare. It's an Ada. And I'm so excited. Ooh, what can I tell you about this? Um, where was this? I was on part seven six months ago. So in the last six months, I finished seven, which I think was the jellyfish. Oh no, the mermaid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The mermaid section was part seven. So I finished eight through 12. Look at that. I'm so pleased with this. I am so, so happy that this is finished. So this particular fabric, it's lighter on the top and darker in the bottom. 
So it's you've got that little bit of an ombre. That's why I placed it exactly where I did was because I wanted that ombre. I stitched it with all the called for things. The only thing that I did differently was um, I did the first two parts as charted. And then after that, it was bothering me that the back stitch didn't quite line up with the stitching. So I started doing fractionals. And that's what made this piece fiddly. But I do like the outcome a lot. And I am loving that it is finished completely. This is the part I stitched on my 24 hours of cross stitch. And it's the only part that I have mistakes in. None of the other parts that I have the mistakes and I didn't have the trouble anywhere else. But this is the one that you haven't seen up close yet. Part 12. They give you the alphabet for your initials. Um, but it's charted to say 2017. And so they don't give you more numbers. But luckily, because they give you the 2-0, I was able to just put in 2-2 two, two, and it worked out perfectly fine. Oh, that was so fun. I put up a backstitching video and I, I backstitched this one on camera for you. If I had to say my favorite thing about this... I really like the sparkle in the jellyfish. It, it really doesn't show up on camera, the metallic. But it's there. And I think working on the turtle was really challenging with all the fractionals, but backstitching it was really rewarding. I learned about using beeswax with metallics on this piece, but I didn't learn about it until I was working on the jellyfish. So everything before then, I was not using it, and then somebody told me about like using a beeswax or something, and I tried it. Game changer! <laughs> Oh, it's so cute, though, and it's finished. I don't have a frame for it, but I want to try lacing myself and framing it myself. And it's going to get hung in a bathroom. Probably my downstairs bathroom, like my half bath. But I've, I've always just seen this piece getting hung in the bathroom. So this was finished on November the 4th during the retreat. So, the finish bell was not out yet when I finished it. But, Jen very kindly announced it to the entire room that I finished it. <laughs> and, it's so fun. It's so fun because when you finish something, you feel like this whole like big sense of accomplishment. And so to have other people like cheering with you and, and to hear that inner excitement outside of you, that feels good. So if you attend a retreat, do you have something pretty close to a finish? Do it. I worked on that first until it was done. I was not going to work on anything else with that so close to being done. And I made sure that, like, the people who were sitting around me, like, Alara was off doing stuff with her bags, and I waited until she came over. I made the last few back stitches really slowly so that she could get over there and celebrate this finish with me. So I had started that January 1st, 2017, and finished it November 4th, 2022. I am... So happy that that one's finished. So happy. The next project was also a 2017 stitch along. This one is called Mystery Town and it's by Ships Manor. What makes this piece 
really quite unique is like you get the background and then each part the different buildings you got two options with what to stitch sometimes they were like completely different buildings and sometimes well no they're pretty much just all completely different buildings like you get a choice in in what it is that you're stitching um, and that is what halted me, to be honest, that is what halted me for a long time on this. It's because I got all the background in, and then the first part came out, and I was like, there's choices? How can I make choices if I don't know what all the choices are, like all the different parts? I, I can't make a cohesive choice. So I didn't work on this for years and years <laughs> and years. That's what it feels like anyway. Um, so I started it on January 20th, 2017. Where's my paper that tells me all the information? It is 16 count, um, hand dyed, Ada. Yeah, this says I, I started it January 20th, 2017, but then I didn't start pick it up again until January 28th, 2022. So under the sea, I picked up a little bit. I think I would do like a part and then I put it away for another year. Um, but this one I just didn't touch until finally I sat down with my daughter and we made all the decisions about which buildings. And now we just have to decide if we're doing any color changes, but the buildings themselves are chosen. So, where was I six months ago? I was on, it says I was on part two, or I finished part two. But I can't, but I'm also realizing that the background wasn't numbered apart, so I don't know if I meant my part two or its part two. It doesn't matter. But now I have, I think, five parts finished. And there's seven in total when you include the background. So, you, we have a barn with beehives and apple trees. We've got a flower cart. This is Lee's Pet Cafe. We did a color conversion on this. My daughter chose all these colors. Uh, this house, I think we did as charted. I think those colors were and these colors. So this house I think is next and then you've got a house here and a couple other things up here. This actually stitches up very fast. So um, and it's taking the place of under the sea. Now that under the sea is finished this one is is going to get finished. Hopefully by the end of the year that's my that's my aim is by the end of this year and I, it's very possible because it is, it's a quick stitch. All right. Father Christmas with toys. This is a max color version. Artwork by Yvonne Gilbert, charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I love this older Father Christmas vibe. In the last six months, I've only put in 229 stitches. So have fun with this before and after picture. I'm pretty sure I, I worked in down here. 229 stitches. This came out for Mania. This is going to come out by the end of the year. I still have to meet a stitch goal on this. So it will be coming out in a couple weeks throughout December for sure. So I can meet that, that stitch goal. I'm trying to think of how much more. I think I need like 4,000 more stitches on this. And here it is in its entirety. It does not look like much, but there are stitching 
throughout all of there. This one I started um, in 2018, November 10th, 2018. I didn't do a lot of stitching in 2017. I remember this. Or in 2018. I did a little bit, but not very much. Um, that's a things happening in my life. Um, so when I started this, I decided to try extreme cross country, starting with the least amount of stitches. So I've got, I've got like waist away knots in here. Anyway, it very quickly, I didn't, I didn't like doing it that way. I still like extreme cross country, just not, I don't like all the waist ways. That's what bothers me is having all these little knots in there. That's what bothers me. Um, and so then I came up and was worked on the first page. And you can see this tree, which is fun. This just looks like a mess, but you fill it in and you're like, oh, there's a tree in that snowstorm. Yeah. Yep. 229 stitches, that's all, in the last six months. See, look, in the back, that's what the back looks like. It looks crazy. Not, not good. Oh, eventually, all of that's going to be covered up with other stitching, but I definitely traveled more than I should have, and more than I do now. That's, in total, that's at 3.72%. I told you this was going to be long. We're going to talk about, like, everything about all the part of... <gasps> it's my bookshelf! Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so excited for you to see this one. This is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. It's artwork by Amy Stewart, and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I am stitching the supersized max color version. This is on 28 count. I don't think I said what Father Christmas was stitched on. It's also 28 count. 10 stitch. Um, this is 2 over 1 10 stitch. I started it on... January 24th, 2019. That's actually a restart date. Um, let me show you something. I came across this fabric <laughs> last week. This was my first start on this piece. That was a lot of stitches, but in the grand scheme of this piece, it's hardly anything. So I started this just after Frodo and Galadriel in 2016. It actually might have been my new year, new start. I might have started it. I don't know. I don't have that notated anywhere. But it, I might have started it January 1st, 2018. Or 2017. Um, two over one full cross on 25 count Lugana. And I was completely loving the picture as it appeared. And I really was still figuring out like full coverage stitching. And, and, and then I just, I really didn't like it. It's, it was too bulky, and so I really didn't like how my stitches were laying and everything. Um, and so, I because between this and Frodo and Galadriel, I started looking at um, the Heaven and Earth Design Facebook page and 
seeing what how other people were stitching and on different counts I, there was a whole lot I didn't know about full covered stitching when I started these things but I just like dove in and I don't really recommend doing that but it's what I did <laughs> so that's why I got this far and restarted it so I restarted it on January 24th 2019 which is three years ago, almost four years ago. However, there was a lot of that that I didn't stitch. So I basically say that this is two years worth of stitching, even though its start date was 2019. I still, it's still wrapped up from when I was traveling. I haven't even taken it out yet. In the last six months, I have put in 1,007, no, 171,160 stitches, which is equivalent to 23.7%. Now, this piece is the reason that I started Floss Tube. I was posting about it on Instagram and said, should I start a Floss Tube video and like show the end of the first shelf on video? And Alara said, yes, you absolutely should do it. And thus was born the beginnings of a great friendship. <laughs> and a year later is when we met, which is so fun. Um, but it was this piece. This is the piece um, that I showed. I showed the first video, or I showed the first shelf done on my first video. So... I really wanted one shelf per year. And so that became my goal was by this video, I would have the second shelf done. And absolutely in a year from now, third shelf and in another year, the fourth shelf, I will be complete in two years from now. This is gonna be done. I have to stand up for this or like shift back here. Okay, look guys, look at it, I knew this was going to be emotional and I've been, I've seen it already several times now, um, this piece has seen me through so much. It not only like means something to me, the artwork itself, but I look at it and I see, I see who I was and the things that I was dealing with and, and how I've grown. Let me come up close. And we'll start over here. You can see the two shells together. It is so hard to show because it's it's so big. So this section it's the last one I was working on. It's a fan and a violin down here. So in total, there are 379,853 stitches. That's a big number. 379,000. It's almost, it's almost at 380,000 stitches. That's a lot. 52.59%. So, oh man. <laughs> Here's the whole fabric. Oh, like standing behind my chair. Like, I mean, yes, there's a margin down there, but still. 
It's crazy. Okay. These scroll rods are from Case Creations, but they are custom sized. So what I did was, because I didn't know what I was doing, <clears throat> I gave them the width of my fabric and then they gave me like an extra inch on each side. So like two extra inches. Um, it's a webbing. So I sewed it on. This is not coming off for two more years. What else can I tell you about this piece? My plans for this piece, so um, I stitch on this every day unless I'm traveling and I build in travel days into my like daily stitch goal. So this last year, I, I kept having to adjust because I didn't know how much I was stitching. Now I kind of have a benchmark for how much traveling I did this last year and I anticipate it to be like very similar if not maybe slightly more this next year. So I did some calculations and basically I have to go between 550 and 600 tenth stitches every day in order to meet this goal. So it is the first thing I work on every day. And if it's the only thing I do that day, I still feel super accomplished and I'm okay with that. But that's my approach with this piece is I do have that daily stitch goal. It is 10 stitch, so please don't compare that number to like a full cross. That would take a little bit longer. And let's just look at it again and appreciate it in all its beautifulness. I think I'm just going to keep stitching the way that I have been stitching. I've discovered uh, the, first, the first shelf was mostly cross country, extreme cross country. And then it hit a point where I just wanted to see it all filled in. And so I started filling it in. If you want to see it in like slideshow form, go to my Instagram on my profile page. There's a highlight bubble. There's only one. It's called Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. Um, and it'll take you through and it'll basically show you like every single percent and you'll see that it starts out um, cross country and then you'll see the point in which I start filling it in from left to right and into the second shelf so it's fun it is so fun um, so because I did that in the first shelf but the second shelf I worked by seam. I kind of outlined it because seeing all of this blank fabric was kind of weirding me out. So I found the bottom of the shelf and just stitched like a little bit. So I had that outline. And then I started at the left and did it seam by seam. And to me, a seam was like this book. And then it was this part. And then I think I did that book. And then I did that section. Over here, I did like these books together because I could see that something was happening here. And I did this all together. Um, yeah. You can kind of tell on the pattern where the bottom of the shelf is if you want to find the bottom of the shelf, if you want to work by shelf. If you look at the pattern, you can kind of see where those horizontal symbols are, even though there are times when you have things that go down, or like her. You can kind of see it in the pattern, though. Um, and just like you can see the shelf, you can also kind of see where sections are. So that's what I do. I, I don't reference the artwork pretty much at all. And I just, um, I'm surprised constantly at, at what I'm stitching. So it's always, it always feels 
every start, starting every section feels like a little start and finishing every section feels like a little finish. Actually, they feel kind of big. Um, but, and I think that helps because I don't typically have a lot of finishes, I feel like, and, but I'm having like a million of them all, I don't know, why do I keep using a million today? But I keep having them on this piece because of, um, because of how I'm stitching it. So in two years, I'm going to have that finished. And it's going to be so exciting. We're going to celebrate Jemima and I. Jemima the Rocking Stitcher, she's also working on a supersize. Um, the Waterhole Master by David Penfound, I think. Um, she's aiming for a finish right about the same time. So we're going to be like celebrating together having these like super sized finishes and it's so fun. It's amazing. She just had a row finish um like a set of pages on hers and I haven't watched her video yet, but I've seen a picture of it. And it's incredible. All right. 38 minutes and we've covered one, two, three, four, five, six projects. Well, 38 minutes into the whip portion. This isn't even counting the, yeah, we're definitely an hour in. Okay. I told my daughter that if this was less than two hours, I would be super surprised. Uh, what is this? Woodland Enchantress. It's a Dimensions Gold Collection kit. Artwork by Ruth Sanderson. It's all the kit things. I started this on January 31st, 2019. It's on 16 count. Gray Ada. There are. I'm going to call them all blocks, but not all of them are 10 by 10 blocks. Um, but I'm just going to call them blocks anyway for ease of counting purposes. Um, there's 480 blocks. I have 87 blocks finished. It's at 18.13%. So in the last six months, sorry, I'm unwinding it. There's like, I've got parked threads and it's caught in the fabric. <laughs> so I'm trying to like make it presentable. In the last six months, I have stitched 22 of these blocks, which is not quite 5%. It says 4.59% in the last six months. I'm probably either driving myself or my daughter crazy because I don't, I'm not paying attention to whether I'm holding it on this side of me or this side of me uh, for the before and after pictures. I pulled this out at retreat because I didn't stitch on this in the last six months and I had like this really brilliant idea two days before leaving on the retreat to see if I could stitch on any project that I had not yet stitched on in the last six months. So that there was something to show in the before and after. This was one of the projects I stitched that square and that square at retreat. I can't wait until I get to her dress, but I think that's on the next diagonal. I don't remember. I used to know that, but I don't anymore. So I'm doing all the kit things, all the directions. That means there's half cross and full cross. And the half crosses are like anywhere from two to five strands. All right. Queen of the night. This one needs some significant attention. 
All right. Queen of the Night, artwork by Josephine Wall, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. There it goes. My little paper. This is 25 count, easy count. Two over one, tenth stitch. This is my smallest Heaven and Earth Designs. It's 153,000 stitches. I don't even know. That's the entire width, as you can see. And halfway is something like here. That looks so good. It does use some Krennic in this piece. Not very much so far, but it's like in the light portion of her wings. So in the last six months, I've put in... Well, okay, I started this... November 6th, 2021, and in the last six months, I have put in 17,744 stitches. Its total percentage is 26.49%. Um, last time I was working on it, I was putting in a bunch of 939 in this area. I'm not sure what I'll do next. Maybe go up here and fill in up here. Or maybe I'll come over here somewhere. I don't know. I think it'll depend on how I put it into a Q-snap and what I decide to work on. This one I want finished within the next year. It's doable, but we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. I kind of, I have a lot of ideas and I haven't really made things concrete yet in terms of how I'm going to move forward with a bunch of projects. All right, November 15th, 2021. By this point, I had already concocted my plan for Stitch Mania 2022, where I wanted a different project every day of the month. And so I was slowly starting up projects that I had. This is Bubble Bubble Chocolate Trouble, artwork by Randall Spangler, charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I started this. I think I already said this, the 15th of November. It's on 25 count, easy count, two over one tent stitch, which I like okay, but I prefer 28 count for two over one tent stitch. Oh, let me do it on this side. I think that's consistent. Um, yeah. I'm just working on Sky, and I'll be working on Sky forever and ever until it's done. This is the um, moon. Kaylin is deciding how I work on this piece. So I can, I'm doing all the sky and like the trees that are in the sky, but not the moon yet. In the last six months, I've put in 8,101 stitches. And it is now at 5%. Okay. That one's a lot of fun to stitch. Um, there's not a lot of confetti in it or anything like that. All right, next up, Temperature Library. January 14th, 2022. This is charted by Christy. On Christie's Corner Needlework on Etsy. I am going to be buying like the um, like the expansion pack for motifs like this. Um, I just I want to be able to choose 
or see what other choices there are and maybe make some different choices on but I haven't done that yet um, I chose my color range to be jewel tones that's what these are oh gosh Suki you can see them better Um, because I wanted the jewel tone thing. January 14th, 2020, I've put in 4,576 stitches. So I have the whole bookshelf in. I changed the color of the bookshelf, too, to darker. Um, January, February, March, April, May, June. I do have my printout for... Um, these months, <laughs> July through October, all I have is the temperature and then I put in what floss I use. And when I stitch that book, I highlight it. So when I finish Mystery Town... I think this one is the next one that I'm going to, like, try to finish by the end of the year. Or maybe I'll do, um, let's see, Angie from Angie Slowly Craft. She's, she suggested this piece would be really good to make, like, a, a daily stitch, like a strand or 30 minutes. I guess she would have suggested 30 minutes because you've got, she's got that hashtag stitch 30 daily I think is what it is anyway I do like that idea I want this one done um, early January um, if not Christmas Eve proper I don't have a preference but I would like that done fairly close to the end of this year instead of bleeding into next year too much. Oh, that's on 18 count oatmeal Ada, I think. I know it's oatmeal Ada. I have too many papers in here. Where's the one? Yes, it's 18 count. 18 count. All right, next I started, end of January, January 31st, I started this kit that I had called Peaceful Garden Path. It's a one by Sunset by Ann Craig. This is kit, it's the Kit Ada, Kit Threads, it's 14 count. And oh, this side. I really enjoy working on this piece whenever I do. I really, really like it. Um, like here's this corner without its back stitching. I mean, you can see I just barely started the back stitching, and here's what it looks like with the back stitching. It's incredible. Uh, this was a lot of fun, this rose arbor to stitch. So there's ivy in each of the four corners and then the middle, like, garden. Um, and cottage scene. Where was I? I have no information on where I was, so you will have seen a before picture to know what I did. Twisted Band Sampler. This is Northern Expressions Needlework. This is the specialty stitch version. You can get this without the specialty stitches. Instead, they, they chart it for full crosses. Um, so if that intimidates you, but you still like the pattern, they have both options. However, 
The specialty stitches are not that difficult, I don't think. I think they're fun. I really like the specialty stitches. This is on 32 count Belfast linen on black. I am doing uh, one over two. Yeah, one over two. The full crosses are in DMC and the specialties are in the Averisois called for colors. And they are so fun to stitch. So I have finished the second band um, in the last six months. I really wish I could stitch on this one more. One thing about all the stitching, re re retreat stitching, since I was, I had pulled out so many different patterns, is that it made me want to stitch on all the projects again. Like there's a reason why I've only been focused on a small amount, but, but going on retreat and stitching on the different things keeps making me wonder how I can stitch more of all the things, but still honor what my like brain needs and my daily life. So I'm thinking one or two days a month where I just say I'm going to stitch on anything and everything. Um, like, I'll stitch on whatever I want to for however long I want to and then just move on. That's what I'm thinking. All right, the next piece. This is another full coverage. Neuschwanstein Castle. And this is on 25 Count Lugana. Two over one tenth stitch, and that's all. It looks so little and sad and not very much at all. Like, here we go. <laughs> oh man, where the befores and after pictures, or before and current editing this could be, could be fun. This was a birthday start. I started this and Twisted Band Sampler on the same day, my birthday, February 24th, 2022. In the last six months, I have put in um, 397 stitches. I think it only came out for Mania. So that's... That's all it's at. 1.45%. It definitely needs more attention. They all do. All of them need attention. Ooh, my first Bella Filipina, Mayari, Deity of the Moon. She's gorgeous. And stitching this on. 28 count Lugana Opalescent Cosmos by Bestitch Me. Let's see, what else? I started this in March, March 12th, 2022. I have all the beads and the chronic and everything. Oh, I have to unroll her all the way. Now, if you can see, so I've got Halo, which I know is what I worked on last, but I started down here at the bottom. This is the bottom, and I worked my way up, 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 to where I could get to the top in the Halo. Why did I not start at the top? At the time, I just, I didn't. At the time, I started at the bottom. This Halo is all... It's Krennic, it's a lot of Krennic. The blue is DMC, but otherwise it's two colors of Krennic. 
Kine. It's Krynek, not Krynek. Sorry. She's so sparkly. I have no numbers for her. She's gotten stitched on. That's all I know. Okay. And I really want to stitch on her more. The Summer Garden. This is by the Drawn Thread. I want to do all of the seasonal ones and more. I like all of the Drawn Thread Garden ones. This is being stitched with all the things that it told me to stitch with. 32 Count Belfast Linen in Summer Khaki. Started on March 19th. It's really not that big. Look at that. It's only that big. I took this to retreat and I put in all of these leaves and I finished out these top branches. It's a variegated floss for those leaves. This was one of those projects that I hadn't touched in the last six months. So I made sure to do so during retreat. I really like stitching that piece. It's very relaxing every time. Next is Cirque de Carole by Ink Circles. It's beautiful. This is, let's see, I started this on the 26th of March, 2022. It is 32 count Belfast linen and stormy night. This is my floss. It's gorgeous. It's a silks for you PR one. Nope. 090. And it looks so good on this fabric. Look at that. It's so good. This came to retreat and I put in that little motif was there, but I put in the rest of these ones up here. I love thinking about how to path through a variegate for variegation. I don't like just stitching the same way each time. Yeah, it looks so good. This is, I have put in 367 stitches in the last six months. It's currently at 6.47%. Okay. My Chatelaine. Again, this came out for Mania. Or not Mania, at the retreat. I mean, it did come out for Mania. But I hadn't stitched it on it in the last six months. This is Autumn Water Guard. Oh my gosh. Everything's a tongue twister now. Autumn Water Garden Mandala. And these pictures really don't do this piece justice or any chatelaine piece if you want to know what a chatelaine is going to look like you need to see somebody stitching um even just a picture of it but in person makes even um, it makes a big difference um so i pulled this out at the retreat and Oh my gosh, the fabric for this is big. 
and I don't have very much. There we go. I did some of this one over one, like this coppery color here, which has like a single black stitch in each of each of them. I'm really not sure what I'm stitching, but it's fun and it's beautiful and pretty. <laughs> and when I get more in it, maybe I'll have an idea of what it is. Um, like this is the water portion. So am I seeing like roots? Am I seeing a flower? Is there like an animal? I don't know. I just, I don't know, but it's beautiful and I love it. And I want to, I want to stitch on it more. Anyway, that, that was one over one that I was stitching on. I really wish, um, so at the retreat, there were a lot of comments when I was stitching on this uh, of people like, oh, those seem so intimidating or overwhelming. And, and I was able to show them some of the pattern and just say like, this is overwhelming. Absolutely. When I first looked at it, I was, it was a lot to intake, but then I realized I just have to focus on like a small section and I can ignore the rest of it. And once I started doing that, it was manageable, completely manageable. But also I know you can get PDFs and that can help because you can zoom into the one, one, the over one spots, um, which can be hard on a paper pattern to see, but it's beautiful. I loved working on that one. This next piece is the only piece that I did not touch over the last six months. It is December by Little House Needleworks. There we go. And I specifically asked my daughter, I said, I've been doing them in order. So should I put a little bit of work on December just because I haven't or should I just leave it? And we decided to just leave it and allow it to come up when I get there. So this one I started uh, May 3rd. The shadow lane I started at the end of April, April 29th. I don't think I said that. This was May 3rd. Now we're into Stitch Mania. So this was a Mania start, but it, since it was in the first half of Mania, it didn't get in my, it didn't get attention after that. But look, I got all of December done. That's cool. That means I have that twig thing to, to do. <laughs> when I get there. Let's see. How Great Thou Art by My Big Toe Designs. This one came to retreat with me. It is stitched on 28 count Linen in White Chocolate. It was started on May 4th, 2022. And the fabric is a little... You'll see. Okay. So look how close that margin is, y'all. That's the very top border, though. Oh, and you can see the variegation in it a little bit. Um... When it comes time to frame it, I'm going to sew on some fabric so that it can be laced, um, and then it'll still look like, like there's enough that it can be folded over and be just fine. But that is, it's just how it ended up being cut with the fabric and everything. But look how little it is, it's not that big. It's kind of a stiff fabric, so it, it holds all the creases very well, unfortunately. Um, oh, next is a finish. Oh, I just finished this piece. This, I finished it this morning, the morning that I'm filming it. This is um, Little House Needleworks. 
Calendar Girls September. I started it on May 9th and I finished it November 10th. This is 28 count linen in country French latte. All the Calendar Girls are stitched on the same fabric. So here she is. My newest finish. She looks so good. Look at her. The little patches in her knees are adorable and like the basket. So cute. So cute. Alright, that one's a finish. Yay! I'll put you here. Now, from here on out, these are all new starts. There will be no before pictures. Because these were new starts since my six month video. We've got October, the calendar girls from Little House Needleworks. Now that September is finished, this one is going to be next. And she has a really good start. I must have had a lot of time to stitch on this day of mania. Because that's, that's all I would have stitched on is the one day. That's a lot. Um, May 13th is what it says. Wow, I can't believe I have this much done in one day. Okay. Um, moving on. <laughs> This is, God rest ye merry gentlemen, why am I closing this? I unzipped everything. God rest ye merry gentlemen by Lindy Stitches. I unzipped everything, but I didn't take it out of its plastic. This one cracks me up so much. It is on... 32 count Lugana in green. Top border. It's not even all the top border. There's like flower things that go in there. But I started this on May 15th. I have not touched it since. Story of most of these projects. This is, oh, this is Nomi's. Hold on, I need to get you a picture of Nomi's. All right. Snuggle up Nomi's, it's cold outside. This is charted by Kaylee of Kaylee Tent Stitch. She's got a website, the sewing shop. Uh, this is on 32 count Belfast linen that started off as evening rose, but was, um, I dyed it and I love it. Look at this. So this lighter color is kind of the original color, but I love this hand eye job. And that's my start. I've been looking forward to pulling this out again. So I'm thinking it's got to come out over the Christmas season sometime. At least one day. One of those like stitch anything days. Um, when did I start that? Why is Nomi's... Oh, I skipped two pieces in there. Nomi's I started on the 21st of May. But on the 18th and 19th of May, I had starts that are now finishes. That's why I missed them, because they were in a different spot. That's okay. I just showed them out of order, though. On the 18th of May, I started... June. 
she's got the bees and the beehive. I finished her on the 7th of September. And then on the 19th of May, I started July. And she was finished on the 15th of September. Her cute puppy dog. Look at that. There's like a random hair that's glaringly obvious to me. There we go. Then I started Nomi's on the 21st of May. And I did this. Um, that's 728 stitches. So it's, she's at he, she, Nomi. Nomi is at 6.67%. I'm doing all the called for colors, but I love the fabric that I have for it. Um, Nomi's, Nomi's. Y'all, my pile right there is big. Cleanup's going to take a while. All right, then I started November. November's interesting because it's the only month where the month name is stitched in three different colors. All the rest of them are stitched in one color. But I started that on the 22nd of May. Here you can see, like, there's one color and there's a second one. I haven't gotten to the third one yet. That's a little bird. A little bit of that. That's her hair. Okay. Let's see. Then I started August. On the 23rd of May, I finished her on the 23rd of September. Oh, that's kind of fun. They're both 23rds. I love a stack of books. Okay. On the 25th of May, I started March. I already had um, January and February done in a previous lifetime. Uh, so March was the first out of the 12, the remaining 10, I guess. I finished it on June 14th, 2022. So she's the first one I finished in this batch of 10. I started April on May 27th and finished her on July 17th. Mania, what I had done was picked randomly. You can go back and see, uh, I don't know which video it is, but one of my videos just before Mania, I would have picked out the order of the projects I was gonna work on or start, if you're interested in knowing how I did that. Um, also on the 27th of May, I started a project that was unplanned at the beginning of Mania. I do not have a picture of what it will look like because it's a stitch along. Um, it's from Owl Forest Embroidery. It's their indoor houseplants one. And the reason I wanted to start this one is because... I wanted to try out 40 count for a future project that I really want on 40 count because it's a full coverage and size wise I needed it smaller. It's part of a whole plan y'all. It's part of my Lord of the Rings wall which has to be thought of like in individual pieces but also as a whole. Anyway, so that's, that's where this one got born. This is part one. I think 12 parts have been released. It's almost finished. I've done part one. This is 40 count linen in water lily. I'm stitching it one over one tent stitch. It is tiny. Look at that tiny. Don't look, my nails are awful. I say, every, I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing? Like trying to see and the fabric is in my face. 
my hair dye is all over my fingers because I don't know why it still is. I really want to stitch this one. So my thinking, my thinking is that I'll get Mystery Town, then the bookshelf, at least to be caught up, the temperature bookshelf, and then I'll get back and working on this one. That's my thinking. Or, if I finish Calendar Girls before the end of the year, maybe I'll do this in place of Calendar Girls before I start my new series for next year. I don't know what I'm thinking. Roughly speaking, like I said, it's rough plans. It all kind of depends on how my stitching goes over the next, like, month and a half. Um, May 29th. I started May. She was finished on August 8th. And again, these are all 28 count um, in linen in country French latte. We're getting we're getting there, guys. I think there's like five left. One, two, three, four, five. This is Victorian Christmas Bell Pull. It's a Jamlin kit by Donna Giampa. Um, this gold is very obnoxious to stitch with. Even, even using beeswax. But that's what I started with for Mania, is that gold. Um, like, it's not the worst thing. It's better with the beeswax, but it also was not my favorite thing to be stitching with. This is Kit Ada 14 Count. Kit threads, all the kit things. My last mania start on May 31st was Canopy Heart by Dakota Detweiler, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I started this with Alara. It only has 10 colors. The mini version has 11. Yeah, there's the colors. That's it. Well, it uses more thread than that, but that's all the colors. So this is 28 count. It's one over one full cross. I tried something new. Um, oh. And that's it. 1,200 stitches right there. Point four percent. I have seen seen people stitch a lot more of this chart, and I love it. I fall in love with it every single time. For a while, I was stitching it on the last day of every month, and then my brain said that's still too often in switching projects. However, now I have more cue snaps to work with, so. I might be able to do it again. We'll see. I haven't really decided things like this yet. I think I'm going to try and see what like one to two days of stitch anything goes before I decide if I want to regularly stitch on something like try to like have a set plan even if it's just one day a month. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. Okay, and then I started Sabrina in June, June 6th, 2022. I started this with Catherine, the Needleberry Stitcher. Uh, this was born as, a, like, a, it's a collaboration where we're stitching the same thing, we're using the same fabric. Um, 
but she's going to stitch it with beads and I'm stitching it without beads. I'm also doing over one stitch um, skin and she's doing over two skin. So she is further along than me so you can go check out her like channel and or Instagram if you want to see what it looks like further on. And when this is finished, um, we're, we're going to get together. I will totally drive to where you are, Catherine. So that we can have like a, an in-person like film side by side, um, comparison between the two. This is 28 count linen in Sprite by Picture This Plus. She is gorgeous on this fabric. Look at her. Isn't she so pretty? So all of like her earring and up here, those are beads and what I did was stitched it with the DMC equivalent of the bead and then I added a blending filament like I just picked a silvery one this one happens to be a I don't know what it is solar holographic I don't know something um, and so I'm using a strand of that to give the beading area a bit of sparkle, which is not going to show up in the video, but you can see it in person. And then all of that skin is one over one. It's so pretty. I have definitely been wanting to bring her out again, but obviously I haven't. So. I really need that, like, touch everything day. Not everything, but stitch on a lot of things. Okay. For the longest time, that was my last start. I felt zero need to start anything else after Mania. In fact, I felt overwhelmed with how many whips I had. Because at that point, I think I had, like, 34... And it was feeling like too much. I, I wanted to work on all the things, but realistically, I couldn't work on all the things. And my brain was all like, la -di -da -da. anyway, those of you who have seen all the rest of my videos, you already know all of this. Um, so I just, I kind of reduced what I was doing and then I reduced what I was doing even more. So I've mostly been working on three or four projects, like having active projects. They're in categories. My own self-made category. <laughs> um, and, and that's going to vamp a little bit, but not by much. Um, I'll explain. Possibly. But I do have a restart that I did October 27th. Um, this was about the time when I was like, oh, let me see what projects I haven't stitched on in the last six months. This was one of the projects I hadn't stitched on, but I also knew that it was going to be a restart. So I dyed fabric that day and like started it. Um, This is Pavan for These Times by Long Dog Samplers. Now the idea with this one is kind of like companion piece with my ink circles. So my ink circles is on a gray fabric with like that variegated um, silk. I would show you, but I don't know where in this stack it is anymore. I would show you the comparison or the 
not comparison, but I would show you that one and this one side by side. Um, you know what? I'm just going to find it. Hold, please. Seriously, I don't know where it is down here. Um, gray fabric. Uh, oh, here it is. I found it. I found it. Okay. Let me show you Pavon first, and then I will show you both so you can see kind of my vision for it. Okay, so Pavon for these times, this is a 36 count even weave that I hand dyed, but this is the floss. Um, it is a variegated, you can kind of see the light and dark there. It's a Silks for You PR. Oh, I didn't write it. PR150. Yes. And this was, this is what it was. It, this was my first uh, fabric I ever hand dyed. And it turned out great. Like, I love this fabric. Look at that. It looks so good. And even the stitching on it, it looks nice. It looks okay. And if that's what you were going for, you would totally love it. But it's not what I was going for. And so I got this far, almost 10%, 9.5%. And I realized that I was convincing myself that it was okay. But that's, those were my words, like, it's okay, it's okay. I'll be okay, I'll be fine. So I knew I was gonna restart it. When, once I realized that that's what my words were for myself, I realized I needed to get, re-get, re-get, reorder the fabric and dye it, get it a nice dark purple. And then put this beautiful silk on it. And I'm so much happier with it. Look at this. Doesn't that look so much better? It looks so good now. So I learned how to dye dark. Um, here's the difference. This is the same, um, like, dye mixture. I mean, it's not the exact same dye mixture, but like the colors that you use, it's the same. These two things are the same, uh, but I'm, I did mm, like three things differently because I learned and it came out like that. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? I love it. So here's your like before and after. Like, this is what I wanted. Like I said, this is fine. And for somebody who, like, had that in their mind, it would have been lovely. It just was not what was in my mind. So, I like that so much better. Uh, so that's at 1.35% now. 283 stitches. Not much, but it's there. So... You got the long dog and you got the ink circles. And I have a vision of them hanging side by side when they're finished. And and colors were kind of picked accordingly. Here we go. I wanted like the gray on the dark and then the darker on the gray. 
they're very similar like feelings to them the ink circles and the long dog so I'm excited so that I started October 27th 2022 let me make sure I put these in the right bags and then while at retreat Um, Alara and I decided to commemorate, um, meeting in person with a new start. This one is a sister piece to our canopy heart that we started together. It is called Spirit of the Phoenix. It's by Dakota Detweiler, charted by Charting Creations. And let's see here. This is 25 Count Lugana. This is actually the same fabric that I had started my Treasure Hunt bookshelf on. And that's when I found that my old start of Treasure Hunt bookshelf. Um, this time I'm stitching on it one over one full cross. I did a little bit of 10 stitching or test stitching, which was super boring. But that's where I got to. Uh, so I started this on November 5th. I put in 327 stitches. It's at 0.23% done. This is mostly 310, but there is a little bit of 939 in there. Not that you're going to really be able to tell, but I feel like that's the wrong. Yep, this is, it's this way. There we go. It goes this way. This is a branch. And in here is going to be blue, so I'm excited to, like, get in there and get something besides, like, the dark colors. The 99 is up here. The rest of this is 310. So. That one was fun. It was fun to be able to start that together. Like, we didn't just start it at the retreat. At some time, we, like, started. Our first stitch was together. Super fun to have like that memory as part of my like first retreat, meeting Alara, starting this piece. Like, okay, that is all my whips. 27, 27 current projects, um, eight finishes, one start, and all of that. So after I started Sabrina, I implemented a like must finish two pieces and then I can start another piece. And I didn't have to start right away. I could save them up for whenever I did feel like starting. Uh, and I'm going to continue that until I feel like I have a manageable whip pile. And for me, that means I'm able to reasonably touch all my projects. I don't know exactly what that means yet. <laughs> but like, I'm so sad that I had like five or six projects that didn't get touched in the last six months until I decided to do them over um, retreat. I just, and then there's so many others that I haven't touched since Mania, since I started them or worked on them then I just it makes me so sad I want to touch on like all the things much more frequently than I have been able to do so two finishes equals one start so my eight finishes means I could start four things but I started Phoenix so I have three new starts saved up I don't know if I'll ever use them all. I don't know. 
but they're there. So if I want to start something, I could. But I also plan on having more finishes by the end of this year, which means more of those starts are going to join up. But I haven't. I really haven't felt a pull to start a bunch of things. And I really do think a lot of that is because I'm stitching by section on Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, so I feel like I'm constantly starting and constantly finishing. Um, and I do think that that makes a difference in that. So, here's my plans. Um, I guess let's do for the next six months before my next parade, whip parade. My plans are, uh, my Treasure Hunt Bookshelf is my daily piece. For the next two years. Um, my, okay, I kind of have four categories. One is my, my daily, I think it's just four categories. One is my, my daily piece, okay, treasure on bookshelf. Two is my, my travel stitching, or like I'm watching something. I can't actually stitch in the car very well, but if I'm watching a movie that doesn't involve subtitles or if I'm sitting in a meeting or something, I use Calendar Girls right now for that. Um, and I have three months left, October, November, and December. Uh, yeah. When I'm finished with Calendar Girls, I think I have a couple other smalls that I could work on. Um, I haven't fully decided. Oh, I have Mill Hill. I want, I really want to do some Mill Hill Santa, so I'm hoping to be able to do that in the Christmas season. Um, something like that. So travel stitching will get replaced over the next six months, but I'm not entirely sure with what yet. Then I've got like my focus on a finish piece, which has been under the sea. Um, and now it's going to be the mystery town. I talked about this one. Um, mystery town and all the things. My bat my phone is in battery saver mode now. I've been filming a long time. Uh, and then the last one is like my full coverage, which does get switched out. Um, and that's kind of, yeah, it's, it's queen of the night. And, and when I hit a goal percentage, I will switch it out and I have that all planned out. Um, but if I feel like queen of the night needs more time in order to get finished when I want it to get finished, then I won't switch it out with the other pieces. I will just focus on queen of the night. What I'm hoping is to be able to stick in a lot of these other ones on some of those days that I'm stitching on, like, whatever. Um, because I do, I love, I love all my projects and I want, I want to give them all the love. Okay, um, let me plug my phone in real quick. Okay, now it's not going to die on me while I finish up this super, like, my longest video to date. Okay, so I talked about the plans for the future. Okay, I, one thing that I really want to do more of is I want to live stream more. Um, I, I had been doing it, and then I had to Stop, my brain went crazy, my schedule kind of blew up for me, and it's taken me a while, but I loved, absolutely loved live streaming for 24 hours of cross stitch. So, I plan on doing more live streaming for 24 hours of cross stitch in the future. Um, oh, you know what was a huge shock? So, uh, Jessie Marie does stuff. She was at the retreat I was at, and I was talking to her table, and, and um, I 
can't remember how it came up, but for some reason, we were, it came up about full coverage and tent stitching, and my bookshelf was on the brag table, and so um, I tent stitching just comes up a lot, I guess, <laughs> for me. I get a lot of questions about it. Um, and so, but somebody was saying how uh, they were interested in tent stitching, but either didn't quite know where to start or something. St trying to wrap their head around tent stitching, and I said, well, I do have a video about tent stitching up on my channel. Like, I'm told it was well done. Um, and they were like, oh, that's great. And, and Jesse pipes up with, Listen, y'all, if you're not watching Suki's videos, like, she live streamed 24 hours of cross stitch, and it was great, and I'm planning on watching live, like, the next time. I was like, you were watching this? <laughs> she didn't get it live, and she hasn't watched all of them, but she's watched some of it, and <sighs> it caught me by surprise. I don't know if outwardly I was, like, freaking out that she was watching, or if it was just inwardly, but it was definitely inwardly. Okay, um, 24 hours, that's where that was, so I will definitely do that, but I do want to do something more regular. However, you guys are global. I am shocked by how global this is. So I don't want to just do what's best for me. I have a little bit of wiggle room and and when I can. So uh, if you if you like being live with me on when on a stitch with me, please leave a comment or message me or something. Um, if there's like a particular day slash time, and I would also need to know your time zone. I'm in Eastern time. Um, and for me, I Monday through Thursday are very hard for me to do lives, but I can do Fridays and Saturdays really well. Um, so depending on where you are, it might be your, like, Saturday, Sunday. I don't know. Like, it's crazy how global they Whenever somebody from Australia pops on, I'm like, that's quite the time difference. <laughs> um, anyway, if you're one of those people who likes to come on and be live, um, help me decide on a couple different times, okay? Just just help me out knowing if, if like daytime or evening time for you is better. Um, but I do need to know what your time zone is so that I know what that means for me. Okay, now, the best part is if you have stuck with me for the last two plus hours, then you get to enter a giveaway. Okay, so one year on Floss Tube, and I want to thank you all for your incredible, amazing support. Like, I already cried over you guys earlier today, so <laughs> earlier you you crying about you guys and how like incredibly special you are to me. So today's giveaway is um, one, two, three stitch. So you're going to need a wish list from one, two, three stitch. And if you win, I get to look at your wish list and buy you something from your wish list. I do kind of have a dollar amount in mind, so like it could end up being multiple small things. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, and there's going to be two winners for this, for this giveaway. So two of you are going to get something from your one, two, three wish list. I'm going to choose the winners November 22nd.
Um, so, to enter this giveaway, all you need to do is leave me a comment and tell me something that you have been improving in your life or something that you've been overcoming. Um, over the last six months, I have opened up more about my journey, I guess, um, some of my, some of my history, I've talked about, um, like how important mental and emotional health is. These are real things and sometimes we feel very alone. Um, but I want to celebrate the things that you are at, you are working on. It may not be something that you that you feel like you have accomplished something. It's not necessarily a goal. It's it's maybe it's maybe a mindset. It's it's I don't know. I don't know what it is. It could be a new habit. It could be accepting yourself. It could be any number of things, but you're going to know what it is. And I want to celebrate that with you. So, um, there's no special word to use or anything. Um, just tell me in the comment section, something that you are, um, improving or overcoming in your life. Okay. Um, and let me celebrate that with you. And if you want to go see other people's comments and celebrate with them, um, like hugs all around, like let's do that. So um, I think that's all the details on that. Um, and it's everything that I wrote down. Thank you for being amazing, for like your incredible soul being here um, with me today and every day. Reach out if ever you need to, okay? Um, just do it. Just do it, okay? So I'm going to end talking now. I think I'm tripping over my words because my I haven't been drinking anything this whole time. So <laughs> um, I have no idea what time it is or what I'm supposed to be doing right now. I'm just here chatting away with you guys. So uh, much love to you all. I hope this video has been finding you well, that you've gotten a lot of stitching done while you've been watching this. And I will see you all around Instagram and Floss Much love to you all. Bye.